Welcome to another episode of Third and Three with Coach Roger Holmes. I'm Jason Holcomb, joined as always with the coach. Coach, I'm so happy that that first round's behind us for two reasons. One, we won, and two, it's not raining and nasty anymore. I know for you, game planning for a game like that has to be a challenge, but I know you have to feel super good when you come away with a win in conditions like that. Well, we were excited to get a win, there's no question. We knew that early county was bringing in a very physical, aggressive football team to the bowl. We kind of hoped it would be a little cold and wet, to be honest with you. Uh, we didn't want it where our fans couldn't show up, but uh, under the conditions, I thought we had a heck of a night. We didn't turn the football over, I think, but one time under those conditions, and that was solid. Uh, our offense played very well in the second yes. half. Played okay in the first half. I think Markel Mitchell may have had his best night, most consistent night at quarterback, especially when you take into account the conditions. Another young man, I, you know, I gave a shout-out last night at the Booster Club meeting that deserves a lot of credit was Jarvis Jones. Yes. Jarvis came in and we went to some unbalanced formations, and the things that he was doing really gave us an advantage, I think, in the second half. So Jarvis showed up big for us in the playoffs defensively. Had our backs against the walls quite a bit in the first half, just with uh, some mistakes here and there, but we – Defensively, we only gave up a field goal right. on the night. But then uh, we had our errors in the kicking game again, and I think part of that was due to the weather conditions. But uh, all in all, that's the area we've got to look to make the most improvement in as we try to stay alive in this playoffs. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, it doesn't get any easier. As you well know, it just gets harder and harder, and we got to play tougher and tougher. And very impressed with the guys being able to hold Early County to so few points. They were a quality football team. Don't don't be mistaken. They were no. a fantastic football team and want to thank all of their fans for coming out. They had a good show in considering the weather and the travel. This week, uh, another team from far off is coming to see us in Bremen. Uh, from everything that I've heard and seen, they look like a very traditional football team, and they're big and strong. Uh, tell me, Coach, what are you guys looking to do this week to slow down their attack and hopefully get into the third round? Well, we've got to be physical up front because that's what they are. I think, Jason, when I look at Bremen High School, the first thing I see is a team that plays with tremendous discipline and unbelievable effort. They play hard, they play physical, and they're not going to do anything in any phases of the game to beat themselves. They have, a, you know, defensively they run out of a 5-3 look and they're slanting their fronts all the time and they're challenging in man coverage and, and just seeing if you're man enough to stay in there and battle with them. From the offensive standpoint, they, they want to run the football. They do that very well. Their offensive line does a good job of angle blocking and, and folding linemen and doing this and that to create seams. Backs are downhill runners. Quarterback uh, likes to throw the football uh, to number five. He seems to be their go-to guy. But all in all, uh, you know, I think the area, again, that can be the biggest factor in this game this week is kicking game is they've got a young man that's got several offers as who handles their place wow. kicking and punter chores for him, and he can be a big difference maker. And, uh, you know, we need our crowd to show up this Friday night yes, because we if we don't, it'll be a home game in Dublin, but it'll be a Bremen crowd Yes. Uh, because, man, they fill it up. They're excited about their football team. And uh, we need our fans here rocking and rolling in the Shamrock Bowl. Yes, we sure do. And we need to make sure that this place is packed out. Uh, I know that Bremen's going to bring a good crowd. They're a quality football team. And we want to make sure that we show how awesome we are, both in the stands and on the field. Kickoff's going to be the same, 730. But we do have a ticket price increase per GHSA, and that's $10. Last week was $8. And it staggers up during each round. And we'll make sure to keep updating you on those uh, increases do know that the rules are very specific unless you're a baby in your in the arms everybody's got to pay so we just want to make that clear to everyone and that's a GHSA rule that's not a Dublin high school rule hope that everybody will observe that and still come out tickets are on sale in advance of course there's no ticket discount this week because it's playoffs but make sure to go ahead and get those tickets ahead of time keep the lines low and go ahead and get your good seat in the stands I want to celebrate everybody because all the folks that came out last week, we still had a, a decent amount considering the weather. And I want to thank everybody because it was miserable. I just tell you that much. <laughs> it was miserable. So hopefully this week is just going to be cold 
Yeah, nothing else. Well, it's supposed to be 70 for on Friday, sunny, and I think kickoffs are in the 50s, so that's about as perfect as yeah, it that, gets. Yeah, that's football weather. I'm not going to give forecasts because last week the original forecast I had was looking purdy, and it was not purdy. So I have to <laughs> apologize for that. But, Coach, before we call it a day, we've got two other topics we want to hit on real quick. First off, want to congratulate the Hall of Fame induction class that was just announced earlier this week. We're flashing that up for you right now. It's a whole list of folks across the decades from Oconee High School and from Dublin High School. Already seen some folks excited and happy, including talking about kicking game, Bryston Canada. Uh, he's been selected to the Hall of Fame this year. He went and played at Air Force, uh, actually took part in one of our state championships and, and played a really big role for us during the kicking game, was a fantastic place kicker. And now he serves with our armed forces. Want to thank him for that. But, Coach, I know for you the Hall of Fame means a lot because it's a way to celebrate the legacy of Dublin football, but also perpetuate it into the future. Well, Jason, the Hall of Fame is something now, I think we may be, what, eighth year, ninth yes. year of having the Hall of Fame. And it was something that really, I mean, I, I went to some of our people in the community and said we'd like to start this to, to just more or less to continue to recognize the history and tradition of Dublin football. It's a group of gentlemen that uh, – are the people who look at and, and evaluate and try to determine who goes in. I'm sure there are still some people out there that are going to get in that deserve to be in, but you can only do so many a, right. a year. And, and I don't know everybody on that list, obviously, but the ones that I do know, they were all tremendous football players at Dublin High and all well-deserving, or Oconee High School also. But they're, they're all deserving of what uh, the award. And we hope people make some plans in January to get out and enjoy that uh, yes. Hall of Fame night. And we'll talk about it more, yes. I'm sure, uh, leading up to that event. Yes, we'll definitely talk about it. Uh, again, it, it's $30 at the door for people to come. Go ahead and make plans in advance. All that money goes to help to pay for all of the trophies and everything else that helps benefit the Touchdown Club. It's just a wonderful evening. Get to see a lot of familiar faces, some a little grayer around the tooth than they were the last time you saw them, but it's always good fellowship and a good time. But Coach, before we close out, we have to do what we always do, and we must ask Coach a question. Let's go. All right, Coach. Well, it, this one is going to be uh, an interesting matchup. It's going to be uh, two coaches, one who's already in the Hall of Fame, uh, probably could have got in just on his playing ability alone, but also is a fantastic coach as well. And the other is probably going to get in the Hall of Fame too eventually. And let's go ahead and go to the footage. First off, we've got Andy Reid got a victory last night in Mexico City. Congratulations on that. So you see there's Andy. And then we're pulling it out of the vault, Coach. We're going Ditka. We did it. So it's Andy Reid versus Ditka. And this is 1985 Ditka. Now, not to confuse everybody, it's not gray Ditka. It's prime Ditka. So, Coach, we got Reid versus Ditka. Who do you got this week? Well, both great coaches. Andy looks like he hadn't taken much care of his. His is in the <laughs> middle of the season. But uh, I got to go with Mike Ditka. You know, he's, he's uh, you can look, it's well-trimmed and then neat, and, uh, and Ditka's just Ditka. Yes, he is. And uh, he, I don't think he's changed a whole lot. And uh, I'm excited to see that you picked Ditka because that, that's one of the funnier coaches. In fact, I enjoyed him in kicking and screaming a soccer movie because I'm a soccer guy too, so I got to throw that out there. But – Want to make sure that you guys keep those suggestions rolling for the mustache of the week. Want to, want to thank Mr. Zembiak last week. He retweeted us. Thanks to you, sir. Uh, hopefully, we'll keep this mustache thing rolling uh, another three or four weeks. That's the goal. Uh, in between, come to the football stadium this Friday at 730. Going to play Bremen. Hopefully, get another victory and move into the third round. Tickets are $10. Follow us, like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere that you see Dublin football. And as always, this has been 3rd and 3 with Coach Roger Holmes.